Good morning, Timothy. Good morning, Maya. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? Good. It's sunny. It's a little bit windy out here. If the wind begins to kind of uh, destroy the the microphone, please let me know, and I'll I'll send the command. Okay. Anyway. Before it's too late, right? Yes. <laughs> great. Okay. So um, I think that we need to start immediately with uh, the topics we're going to talk about today. So here we go. Good morning. Thank you very much, Maya. Today is April 23rd. It's election day in Tokyo, in Japan, actually. Um, this is our 115th episode, Maya. 115 episodes. Rockin'. Thank you for counting, Timothy. Yes. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in and for listening to our weekly uh, broadcast on what's going on in Japanese politics. Today is really focused on what's going on with the elections, the elections for uh, municipal um, elections throughout Japan, about 41 different prefectures are having elections today. It's a huge deal. This happens every four years. They collect um, about 50% uh, of the elections uh, nationally, and then every four years it happens again. This guy's going to start his engine again. Um, and so that election is today. This was a two-phase election, as you will recall. The first phase ended uh, last week when they had elections for nine governors and um, various uh, mayors in big election cities. And today is the, the rest of it. Today is different from the first one. The first one was mostly about the governors, nine governors. And today's election is about the municipalities and mayors of, of a lot of, of districts. More than 2,000 seats are up for grabs. And um, importantly, in this phase, there are five diet seats. One is an upper house seat and one and four are lower house seats. <laughs> this is why they don't allow guns in Japan. Anyway, um, so it's a little bit um, convoluted because of the two phases, the phase for the governors and then the phase for the mayors and the municipalities. And then it's further complicated because there are five diet seats, national seats, by elections. These five seats were given up or uh, made vacant because of resignations, because somebody was kicked out or somebody died. And um, so those seats are up for election today. It's a big deal for the prime minister, because as you know, the prime minister has another year or so, a year and a half to, um, to be in his position as a prime minister. His his um, term ends in September of 2024, so not quite a, a two years. Um, and he wants to continue being prime minister, obviously. He wants to succeed what his boss, uh, the person who made him foreign minister and kept him as foreign minister, uh, Mr. Abe, was able to do in his long tenure. He wants to be not only the longest serving foreign minister, but the longest serving prime minister. And this is his first term, so a lot is, is weighing on not just this election, but probably more importantly, G7, how he does in G7. And I think G7 is going to be a, a windfall for him. He's put a lot of effort, a lot of energy into making sure that that goes smoothly. There is a little bit of a uh, wrench in the works with North Korea. North Korea is providing a lot of worry right now. That's been a little bit of uh, messaging that's been going on over this last week with regard to um, you know, nuclear proliferation. And the, the main theme of, of G7, the prime minister hopes, is nuclear non-proliferation. He's hosting it in his election district in Hiroshima. And so he wants to promote that. It's a little bit of a nice trick because in, um, in light of what's going on in Ukraine and the possibility of, of uh, Russia kind of uh, in, insisting on its ways and, and saber rattling with uh, limited use of nuclear weapons, um, the, uh, the West, uh, the United States, and, and the coalition of forces, including Japan, is confronted with the possibility of actually responding in a similar way. And so uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of contention there. 
but North Korea is a, is a worry, and it, it seems with their successful launch and experimentation with a solid booster rocket, which happened about 10 days ago, um, there's a little bit of a lull now, but some, some quiet messaging that is going on that suggests that while G7 is meeting in Hiroshima between May 19th and the 21st, that he might want to make sure that his presence is felt and um, made known. So there's, there's that going on too. But back to the elections. So um, something that is um, actually a part of the election process here, it's a little bit worrying if you're really that concerned about um, the democratic process and um, the ability of people to run for office and to uh, gain the kind of election support that they need to, to hold an office. About 40% of some of the, um, the seats have gone up uh, uncontested. That means that when they announced the election starting, uh, there were many, many candidates who were unopposed. And the day that the election campaign was announced is the day that they accepted uh, their, their seat because as mayor of a certain town, um, they have no, no, nobody that's running against them. This is a, an outgrowth of the declining population in many of these rural areas, particularly in, um, in the northern regions of, of Japan, but also elsewhere in Japan, as, as the demographics show, young kids want to go to the big cities, they want to go to university or a junior college, and then they want to get a job in a big company, they want to work where you know, all of their friends are, and it's not where grandma and grandpa happen to be. So uh, the the population is, is flooding into these main centers, uh, Nagoya, Osaka, Tokyo, uh, Hiroshima, uh, to some extent. And the uh, rural areas are being depopulated. And that is why we came up with 1010, which is a gerrymandering um, a scheme to redistribute uh, a couple of diet seats in the national election, the diet seats, to where the population centers are. So this is a big deal. It was uh, forced upon uh, basically the LDP, uh, which is traditionally strong in the rural areas, to accommodate this population flux so that there are more uh, seats in the, the large areas and less seats in the rural areas. So the elections that we're having today, there are five, as I said before, one is for an upper house member, two are in Yamaguchi. Uh, there's uh, Wakayama and Oita. I'm sorry, Oita is the upper house um, uh, election. But in uh, Yamaguchi, uh, they have lost one of their diet seats there. So it's important for this election that the LDP wins both of those. They are predicted to win both of those. But the whole scheme tonight, you, and when you watch TV, please watch TV at around 8, 8.15. Uh, the election results will start coming in. Uh, they do it in a pretty organized fashion here in Japan, where they begin to announce, you know, who the winners are, what the prospects are of the candidates, if it's a tight race. And then probably by this time tomorrow, uh, most of the, the contested seats will be uh, decided. They do it pretty, pretty effectively here, as you can imagine. So the, the kind of the key issues that we want to watch on this one are what's going on in the five diet seats. And does the LDP come out basically on top? And then the second thing we want to watch is what's going on with Ishin. So Ishin no Kai is the political party that was started in Osaka. And this, um, in the first phase of this election cycle that we're in now, they did extremely well in Osaka. They got the governor of Osaka, they got the mayor of Osaka, and they received the majority of seats in the, um, in the assembly seats there. Not only that, but they also won a, another governor's seat in the next contiguous prefecture, um, which was a big win for them. This was caused by um, some confusion within the LDP about who who the LDP is going to support. And it also is a bit of a reflection on LDP internal dynamics and um, uh, how they orchestrate their profile in conjunction with Komeito, which, is not, which has not gone very smoothly this time. But uh, in, the, in the vacuum of that kind of tightness between Komeito and the LDP, Ishin Nokai is coming up. The number one 
opposition party, as you know, is the Constitutional Democratic Party. Um, but Ishin is coming up really strong, and this is part of their strategy to be prepared for the next election, for the next lower house election. So all of these things that we're talking about now, and the reason why we're spending so much time on the election today is because it pretty much dictates when the prime minister will hold an election for the lower house. So he doesn't have the unilateral ability, but he has the kind of final say in closing down the house. He can initiate that process and he can basically drive it. It's not something that's that can be done just like that. There are a lot of uh, parts in the machinery that um, telegraph these these things. So we're not going to know it uh, until um, you know a couple of days beforehand. You're going to get a little bit of a feeling of it. But the prime minister is more likely than not going to hold a snap election after G7 while the diet is still in session and before the uh, the break. So the break for this diet session is uh, June 23rd. So it's 150 days uh, session. It can be extended, um, but uh, I think the, the major point and the, the major focus of, of today is the election because it rolls into G7, which starts in, gosh, just uh, almost exactly um, one month away. So there's a lot of news going on that. So uh, the, the part about the uh, candidates running for election and the contenders that come up in these in these uh, small rural areas is a little bit disturbing. There are uh, candidates who are interested in, in politics, but it seems that it's more more of the older people who are interested. With Ishin, it's more younger people who are getting involved in in politics, and they're coming from Osaka, the Osaka prefecture, the the higher populated areas. So there's a real dynamic going on here in terms of the rural area versus the city area. And that dynamic is likely to intensify. So if you've got um, uh, various political offices and nobody that wants to, to run for them, that says something about politics in general. And it's a, con it's a, uh, a concern for the LDP. They want more women involved. They want um, younger people more involved. But I think Ishin is a, a little bit more ahead of the game. Um, Ishin criticizes the LDP as being Showa politics, so politics of, you know, 30, 40 years ago. And Ishin is much more lively. It's, it's as you might expect coming from Osaka, it's, those are the distinctions. But the difference between um, the LDP and Ishin is not as great as the distinction between the LDP and Komeito, for example. Um, the only problem is that Ishin wants to have a... Um, uh, a kind of a, a, an independent voice. It wants to be the opposition party, um, the number one opposition party. It's got a little bit of a road to climb in order to beat out the Constitutional Democratic Party, but uh, the results will be seen in today's election. So with the races for governors, the LDP did um, pretty well. They lost a very critical um, governor's race in Nada. Um, and um, I, I, I hesitate to get into too much detail there because not many people are that familiar with internal uh, politics within the LDP. But typically the local um, chapter of the LDP has a priority in selecting who the candidate will be for a lot of different um, positions, particularly for, for governor. In NADA, the local chapter recommended the incumbent to run and the office in uh, Nagatacho, the headquarters of the LDP, recommended a different candidate. And since um, the local chapter didn't acquiesce and the central government didn't acquiesce, they had two people running for uh, governor in, in Nada. Um, one of them should have kind of bowed out and supported the other candidate to ensure that the LDP would win. They didn't. And the, uh, the candidate that was being suggested or recommended by the central government was a former uh, diet secretary to uh, Sanai Takaichi. And so she was promoting that. And there was a little bit of a fight between her and the local chapter. Um, nobody acquiesced. And as a consequence, the LDP split the vote 
and the Ishin candidate took the governor's position. This is a huge boost in the arm, and it also has a kind of a reflective or a uh, kind of a, a cumulative effect in phase two of the elections. And so I think, um, you know, probably uh, uh, Takaichi is, is going to suffer um, politically as a result of not acquiescing. There's a, an internal fight going on within the LDP now about her and her position. So there is a huge dynamic going on there. The other thing that's kind of in the background is um, should the LDP do well, it is predicted to do well, um, the, the uh, prime minister will call an election uh, shortly after G7. The timing of that will be di dictated by the outcome of this election. So I think more so than the Constitutional Democratic Party, the prime minister is worried about the Ishin no Kai because of their, their momentum, the buildup of, of their uh, influence. Although polls don't put them very high in terms of voter appreciation, um, they are coming on very strong. And so if they do uh, better than expected in this election today, the prime minister will be forced to call an election, uh, a snap election of the lower house rather quickly after G7. In G7, his sails will be full of wind. Um, it would be a good time for him to be uh, slapped on the back for a good job and to put the LDP in a better position and to reestablish himself as uh, the prime minister. He would also uh, reshuffle his cabinet. Uh, there are lots of cracks in the administration that are showing up, particularly with regard to how the LDP machinery is being run by Mr. Motegi, and there's a little bit of friction going on there. Uh, there's also some friction with uh, Mr. Nikai and uh, Mr. Kishida. So you might not have followed this, but Mr. Nikai lost a member of his faction. And in political rankings within the LDP, there are maybe five, six uh, political factions there. It turns out now, since Mr. Nikai lost one person, Mr. Kishida got two new members uh, maybe three weeks ago. We reported that here. Um, it now turns out that Mr. Kishida's faction is number four in standing, and Mr. Nikai's faction is number five in the standing. So um, Mr. Nikai doesn't want to give that up, won't give it up very easily. Mr. Motegi is at number two. Mr. Abi is at number one. So um, there's a real horse race going on here, and I think with regard to Mr. Motegi, the prime minister is a little bit worried about that. And so I think there's um, some politics going on, which means that if the prime minister does hold a lower house election and getting all of his forces working together to make sure that the LDP wins, uh, you've got internal strife that will show up just as it has shown up in uh, NADA. NADA was a kind of a watershed for the LDP because they lost, they didn't uh, coalesce onto one candidate and Ishin was the, the third runner-up, but because the LDP split the vote, he came in uh, first place. And so this is the first time for the Ishin to have a governor outside of Osaka. In Osaka, as you would anticipate, they're really strong and dominant. So what happens elsewhere in Japan today with Ishin is going to tell us that the, uh, the prime minister really needs to hold that um, uh, snap election sooner so that the Ishin doesn't have time to coalesce their forces. If he gives them time, they're going to be getting more and more candidates, um, and they're going to be robbing candidates from, from the LDP and from the Constitutional Democratic Party as well to run as candidates in a lower house that will be coming up um, probably within the next, next couple of months. So um, the things to watch today are um, uh, OITA, uh, the upper house election there, and in Chiba. And uh, Chiba is important. It's important because of the four lower house seats that the um, that are up for grabs today. This is the one that the LDP had and they lost it because the LDP member who had that position had to resign because of his handling of political funds and lack of credibility and ethics violations, that sort of thing. So they've got a bit of a black eye there. So they have a candidate that the LDP has run, 
um, uh, interestingly enough, uh, she's female with a Uyghur father and a Uzbeki mother. Uh, she's a nationalized, a naturalized uh, Japanese citizen. Um, and uh, her name is uh, Eddie, what's her, her name? Eddie um, Arifa. Yeah, Arthia. Arthia Eddie. And um, there are seven candidates running in Chiba 5. She is maybe the top contender. She is the one supported by the LDP. It's not a shoe in because there are a lot of people that are disappointed in the LDP. The interesting thing that's going on in Chiba and the reason why you need to watch it is because there is an Ishin candidate there. I think he might be the youngest of the seven who are running, a 28 year old um, candidate supported by Ishin. Um, and he's not likely to win, but the number of votes he is able to collect is going to be an indicator of how Ishin is doing in Chiba number five. Chiba number five is contiguous to Tokyo. So Chiba is a, a big prefecture. It's the next prefecture over from Tokyo. But Chiba number five kisses up against Tokyo. So this is kind of a, 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 an indication of how well Ishin is bleeding into uh, the Tokyo uh, election district as well. So this is a big, big thing to watch. Um, like I said earlier with Nada and um, also with Tokushima, um, uh, the two governor's races that, that went there, it was um, a bit of a, I don't know. Um, it just shows the, the LDP is not, is not really uh, cohesive. It's, it's like uh, Mr. Suga likes to say, you know, it's factional politics at its worst. Um, you know, the, the faction, the factional system keeps the LDP in power, but it doesn't mean that everybody's singing the same song. So, um, that's what you should be watching today. Um, I'm going to be watching it. I wish I could be reporting to you tomorrow, but you have to wait until next week before we get to it. But that's the big news today. Uh, watch the elections. Um, it'll be quiet today because all campaigning stops. There was some suggestion about a sympathy vote going for Mr. Kishida as a consequence of um, this, this bomb blast. I don't know if it was a, a, an assassination attempt. I kind of doubt it. It was an assassination attempt. Um, but, uh, it was a big deal and it happened the same way that the assassination for, of the prime minister happened. Um, Mr. Abe, um, you know, nine months ago. So, um, it, it created a lot of concern and the, Prime Minister, to his credit, didn't really play up on it. He didn't kind of milk that as something of, you know, please look at me. It, it happens anyway. But he didn't really quite milk it. It did get a lot of coverage yesterday uh, in the press simply because um, yesterday was the day before today's election. And Mr. Abe was trumping uh, for his candidate the day before the election <clears throat> for the upper house. Um, in, in the last round, and that's when it happened. So uh, the kind of, it's not quite the anniversary, but the anniversary, the, the representation of the identical uh, pattern uh, would have been yesterday rather than one week ago. So, um, uh, you know, politics is funny. Today is a nice day. The weather is relatively nice. And uh, that influences the election outcome as well. So the LDP typically does well when um, everybody else stays home. Um, but when the weather is nice, then everybody wants to come out and participate in the festival that is, that is known as Japanese uh, elections here in Japan. So you see everybody in the, in the polling booth. So there might be a, a very good turnout today, although typically um, the uh, turnout ratio in Japan, although higher than in many countries, is, is kind of low. Um, so let's see what happens today, and there will be a lot of news on that. The other thing that is in the news, and um, in light of the elections, uh, very little else is going on politically. Most of the energy is being focused on, on these elections. So the only other thing that's happening of, of uh, major import is G7. So in Sapporo, they had the, um, the ministers, <coughs> excuse me, the ministers of the G7 uh, participants, um, participating in climate, energy, and environment, and they came up with a couple of recommendations. 
And in Karuizawa, I think they ended on Sunday of last week. It might have gone over into Monday. The foreign ministers all met, and they came up with um, uh, uh, a raft of recommendations. So typically, if you've been in Japan for very long, you understand that the meeting, everything that's decided in a meeting is already decided in the meetings before the meeting. And I think G7 is, is similar to that. So what happened in Karuiza, what happened in Sapporo, they're already finalizing what the proposals are going to be. They meet with the heads of state, <coughs> excuse me, they give them the raft of what the re recommendations are and then everybody uh, claps hands and uh, takes photos. So I think the information that we're getting out of Sapporo and out of Karuizawa are pretty solid. <laughs> In Karuizawa, uh, the G7 ministers have decided that they're going to slap tough, tough sanctions on Russia. They're going to really come down hard and uh, make sure that the uh, the Russian economy feels the wrath and also implements, you know, punitive measures to those countries that are helping uh, avoid the sanctions or to um, sidestep sanctions. And so you're going to see a ratcheting up on sanctions and that will be announced <coughs> excuse me um during g7 in hiroshima and with regard to energy climate and um uh the environment it looks like um they've made uh they've, they've not been able to make much progress there ultimately the recommendation of everybody provides their own recommendation the recommendation that was provided by uh the japanese delegation uh looks like it got the most votes and so it's pretty much a distribution among the G7 countries to deal with coal and the um, decarbonization in their own special way. There's a lot of controversy there about how France is going to do it, how Germany is going to do it. Uh, Japan has its own method of doing it and everybody's really suffering under the, the reliance on coal. And so that seems to be a stumbling block that in light of everything else that's going on with, <coughs> excuse me, with, um, with the energy and uh, Ukraine and uh, what's going on with just the, the price of, of uh, consumption, um, that coal is going to be uh, with us for a little bit longer. They can't avoid that. There has been some recommendations about nuclear fired plants or nuclear uh, uh, powered plants and uh, new technologies there. But the, the big deal is, I think, uh, the sanctions for Russia. So more of that will come out over the coming weeks, but I think the decisions on what the agenda will be um, has been decided. Uh, the only other big news is, um, let me see. We talked last week. So for those of you that um, are regular listeners, you know that we have our typical 30-minute uh, briefing, and then we have a Q&A session afterwards that is held exclusively on Clubhouse. So please sign up to that if you have um, a deeper interest or if you'd like to hear other people's views and opinions. But the issue came up last week about Ishin no Kai, and why are they um, even a party to be um, worried about? Why are they a contender? How did they come up? So I thought I'd just give a little bit of a a snippet of what's going on with Ishin no Kai and how they got started. This is a party that started about 10 years ago in Osaka, and it's pretty much a homegrown Osaka party. Um, it was initiated by a very charismatic governor that was was there. He's still in in circulation, <coughs> although he's not um, a head or a leader of the party anymore. Um, but it is a party that um, pretty much it's conservative in nature about uh, revision of the constitution about Japan's defense policy and about um, health care and um, uh, social services but it wants to be um, uh, an alternative to the LDP and when people are voting for the LDP and are polled later frequently they say well I voted for the LDP because there's nobody else that's kind of around I don't want to vote for the communists I don't want to vote for the socialists so it's the LDP. It's the same refrain that we often hear when people talk about, you know, why did you vote for this person as um, whatever, prime minister? And the refrain always is, well, because there is no else better around. And Ishin wants to fill that void. Different polls have put Ishin no Kai 
um, at a kind of a low third rate. So polls typically, and the polls currently now, uh, with regard to appreciation of the party policies with the LDP, the LDP generally generates around a 40, 45% appreciation or approval rate <coughs> among the voting population. The Constitutional Democratic Party typically generates about a 20% appreciation, and Ishin no Kai gets about 11%. So how that appreciation is distributed or diffused, um, if, if somebody is clever enough to kind of coalesce it so that it's, even though it's 11%, it's in a, a district that is important to you and you focus that, that 11% might make the difference. So I think the, the Constitutional Democratic Party is, they want to maintain their uh, priority as the number one opposition party, the largest opposition party to the LDP. Um, but they're losing that grip. And you can see that that losing of the grip in the governor's elections and their ability to kind of coalesce forces throughout the rest of Japan. And that will be in the wash tonight. So how the Constitutional Democratic Party does today <coughs> will pretty much dictate um, how they do in a new election for the lower house. So uh, Ishin is coming up and doing extremely well there. And so all eyes are on them, how they do in the election tonight. And it, it, it appears that they'll be doing, in those areas that they've decided that they're going to run candidates in, it appears that they're doing um, better than expected. And certainly with the, the governor's race and the mayoral race, they have done better than expected. So the real proof is in the pudding tonight. Sorry for the congestion, Maya, but this is pretty much wraps up. Um, I don't have a clock on me. I don't know how, how long I've gone over. But that pretty much wraps up my, my briefing for today. So can I get Thank ready you, for Timothy. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, You're right on time, 32 minutes. Perfect. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. How is your throat? I hope that you can. Well, I didn't have a cup of coffee next to me, so I, I'm suffering for that, too. But that's too it's bad. getting better. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so thank you for the briefing. Let's move to Clubhouse and continue with the Q and A there. Great. So, okay, and to yes, to everybody who is watching us, this is Japan Expert Insights with Timothy Langley and thank me, Maya Matsuka. Thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Yeah. Next See week next will be week. A, a blockbuster report because we'll be able to report on all the the election results and about uh, predictions for you know a closing down of the house and for what's going to happen in G seven. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Timothy. See you. So to everybody who is watching us on YouTube, thank you very much. If you find this content um, insightful and helpful, please like, subscribe, and comment. That's all for today. See you next week again. Bye.